We're live. Alex Strabian, Red Barrel Liquors. Glad you made it to downtown Indianapolis. Samuel Fouts, I'm glad you had me. A lot different than uh, than Mooresville and Monrovia, right? It's a different change of pace down here. Do you ever do business in Indy or no? Uh, we work a little bit. Our, co- our buying group's out of Indianapolis, so we're off of Rule in uh, Michigan, just down the street from here. So I uh, do some things there and not much business aspect of it. Right. Just, Picking up liquor and taking it back to town. Hey, that's a that's a that's the best business to be in, right? <laughs> that's a lot more work. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you do that just in your vehicle? Do you have a truck or uh, have- take a box truck? We put orders in every week, and then you go through different distributors that drop off, and just come down, pick up liquor, take it to Monrovia, and Mooresville, and spend about a half a day doing it. So, <laughs> really, so that'd be <laughs> your good. whole well, like you said, that's, half your day. That's my Wednesday. Really, yep. interesting. So, when Mer- or Monrovia, Mooresville, you guys have two locations, correct? Yes, sir. And you guys started in Mooresville? Started in Mooresville, um, been 35 years ago on uh, Christmas Eve. Grandpa came in and showed or told Grandma about it. I don't know if she was the happiest camper, but I think (laughs) she's coming around. Um, And then probably have had Monrovia since 98. Mm. So... They've created a heck of a business. They've had it a lot longer than I've been alive. So right. uh, I just enjoyed the process of sliding in there, learning the learning the business aspect of it. And uh, my mom's been there for quite some time. So just uh, trying to follow in the footsteps and make the business better. What was the deciding factor to take it to two locations? I'd have to say probably my, gra- my grandpa's thought thought process in that is there wasn't a liquor store Mm. in Monrovia and there's nowhere around there other than Mooresville and once you go past Monrovia you're going to draw in a lot more and Monrovia's got so much potential to grow for sure so you're going to sit there and have that aspect for quite some time until the census goes up and there's a capability of another liquor store going in or Walmart Meyer everything else but you can only get cold beer and liquor stores in Indiana so we kind of have that aspect of it going for ourselves too so that's a nice portion of it definitely makes sense for the time being yeah okay. and like we you mentioned monrovia is on the rise yeah they're definitely only gonna get bigger and bigger only so. gonna get bigger and bigger Mooresville's kind of landlocked <laughs> there you're seeing more homes go out there which mm-hmm. is helping a lot of local businesses in town and with us being a local business that's what we want to see but um yeah monrovia they're just Cornfields. Yeah, I, <laughs> I mean, how much more shop can you, local, can you baby? See? There, yep, absolutely. It is definitely a small town USA. So, how, how, you guys are obviously a local, or not a local business, but a family-owned business. You, your mother, your grandfather, your grandmother. How'd you get into the business? I'd really, or should I rephrase, always been in the business by force. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty much not really been by force, but they've definitely always needed help and I've always been there to try to give that to him and they've been leaning over times where I was the young young grandson that Mm -hmm. oh you want go have fun and like enjoy yourself or whatever and then you get actually into the business and it's like we're gonna let you realize what business is actually about which has been really nice um I've worked there since I was probably capable of carrying a case of beer (laughs) and so (laughs) it's been very fun and enjoyable and I would never regret it I mean I'm one of uh four grandkids and um my sister's done tastings for us my other two cousins um they lived in carmel and they weren't able to really participate as much as probably what they would have liked to and i just took a liking to it i mean (laughs) it is what it is right yeah so what's your day-to-day what's your mom's day-to-day when it comes to red barrel liquors so my mom for years and years and years did all the ordering she was always there by herself during the day um with me coming on i've been able to kind of loosen that roll for us so open at 8 a.m we get there and mom's got her set of things that she wants to do more working computer aspect pricing and things like that i'm more back stock and doing the whiskey bourbon kind of a thing and craft beer my mom is definitely the wine she's the wine though Mm. so we let her deal with that section and i kind of take care of everything else on that aspect of it as well so um we're just a good duo i'm fortunate enough i mean not very many people can say they work with their family or their mother that get along so right that's the, the interesting portion of it i mean not very many kids can say they work for 
their grandma, grandpa, and mom and get to see them every day. And your grandpa still works every he's, day. He's there every day. My grandma is the same way. She still mops the floors floors when she wants to. Um, if the store's not clean, she sweeps the carpet, pledges every. I mean, it's crazy. My grandpa, he's there. How old are they? 82. They'll be wow. 80, 83 first of May and the end of end of May. So they'll be next Thursday is their 66th wedding anniversary. Oh, my goodness gracious. <laughs> and they're still grinding harder than any of us. <laughs> Both of us, they've got us whooped. <laughs> That's crazy. Every day they're showing up? Yep. Seven days a week? Yep. Oh, man. When I always like to say, I've been in Red Barrel, and it's the cleanest liquor store I've ever visited. We definitely you got that part under control and organized, yeah, very organized. Very. Man, it was it was interesting. I was even in there one time and I grabbed something and I didn't want it or I was going to get something different, and I, I couldn't just put it somewhere else. I was just like, I gotta this gotta go because it's too it's too clean. It's too the 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 other alcohol started dispensing down. I'm like, I'm going to tell the front desk guy take this, put it back in stock. We it, it's perfect. We in my opinion, you. it's perfect. Yeah, well, we would have caught you. We would have said, hey, <laughs> put that back over there in the rum <laughs> section. You, you grabbed rum, but you put it in the vodka section. Now. Yeah, <laughs> That's yeah. just how we – it's actually what they my family's created for our town mm. from Mooresville is just unbelievable. And, like, I go to other liquor stores and things like that, and it's all, like, real clustered and dirty and not clean or customer-friendly. And it's like, hey, it's really not that bad of a business. Yeah, we have perks of – then with good people, bad people, and it's just like all we want to do is get you in, get you out, and make sure you're making the right choices with what you're purchasing, things of that nature too. So, um, yeah, we care about it. Let's talk about because I know you've been heavily involved in the bourbon side of things. Mm-hmm. So where have you? How did you even start there, and where are you taking it? I mean, we got three bottles here actually. Yep. Give me a little taste of that. So my start into this is like i saw the boom coming on and um i really owe all my appreciative bourbon and everything else to um a guy named ray Ray vanderveer um who has the rule in just down the road from here he's really taught me my ways and kind of showed me what bourbon is and um when i go to do barrel picks like these three bottles are here is stay true to your taste profile like and it's just amazing how many people come to our store to sample all of our bottles and purchase and everything else because we have right now 15 barrel picks Mm. in store so you have like tennessee whiskey here this is a straight indiana 100 percent sweet corn from old 55 which jason fruits is a really great guy he's doing something in the bourbon game that you're never gonna see Mm. ever because it's farm pretty much farm to table right out of that bottle um, then you have Old Scout Smooth Ambler, which is MGP, which is Indiana Juice, but totally different than this because this is done in-house, and they're sourcing this out to West Virginia. So um, it just you just go buy these whiskey barrels, and it's what I like. So if you don't like it, you're not going to like it. Well, I was going to say, and it's such a, in my opinion, a sport it, where you're going on a limb, mm-hmm. t- tasting things, and then hoping, you know, I buy X amount of barrels. Hopefully my clientele wants it. Yep. Which is, uh, in my opinion, a big risk in some yeah. regards. And, w- and what's fun, too, is when it comes to, like, the store picks, was what we call them, mm. or the barrel buys, um, you're not going anywhere else and finding that same bottle, for like, sure. across the whole world. That one barrel is just for us. So we're getting 200 and some odd bottles out of a barrel, depending on the size of the barrel or whatnot. But I'm putting my whole taste profile. Right. It makes you feel like you're a gourmet chef or something. You're <laughs> right. Like, all right, yeah. we're going to toss this up a little bit because this is so much different than this. So that's sweet corn. This is finished in an orange wine cask, and this mm. is a 36% rye. So these three here are two totally different. I mean, the 100% Indiana sweet corn, that fits right up in Morgan County just because of all the farm mm. farmland and stuff. So we get a lot of guys that just enjoy that aspect of it, and they try it, and they're like, oh, my gosh, this is really good. So Interesting. And you get $50 bottle. $170 bottle and a $70 bottle. So like the price ranges yeah. vary as well. So, and we keep it at, as cheap as we possibly can. <laughs> I was going to say you guys definitely try to make the prices as a, a 
four. Yeah, possible. just compete. I mean, yeah. it's all you can. Got to make money. <laughs> yeah. If I don't, I uh, won't have a job. Right. So. Got to keep the lights, <laughs> Grandpa, lights on. Grandpa's not scared to fire me. That's, right. <laughs> that's for sure. So, uh, yeah, it's just a. Uh, it's one of those things in any business. I mean, yeah. you're not going to sell yourself short. Nobody's going to. Nobody wants to sell themselves short. And if right. if you do, it's okay. Yeah. If I do, I want to see something come back and trust me on this process because we're gonna just like how you came to me with the interview. Right. It's like trust me with this process and you'll enjoy it. And here I am it'll sitting make, here. It'll make sense. Yep. Here I am sitting here. And it's the same thing when I tell these guys with the, all the bourbon or seltzers or vodka, anything that we sell. Right. It's like. If you don't like it, I'm, tell me what your taste profile is. I'm going to put you on something that you're going to like. Mm. So very wide variety there. But So you look to figure out what the consumer wants and then offer that in your store. Yep. And I just saw, this is a side note, where, I mean, was a guy drinking a bottle in Florida? Uh, Bali. Bali. <laughs> yeah. Imagine the, I mean, you had to feel pretty good about that. I did. I It was... He came in Friday, and he said he was taking this vacation, and then he tasted one of our uh, barrel picks, which I don't have with us today. Um, and he's like, I'm taking this on my vacation. And I was like, oh, cool. Where are you going? Tennessee. He's like, no, Bali. And I was like, oh, that's sweet. A, that's yeah, pretty cool. That like, is pretty cool. I got a couple guys. Um, don't quote me on this, but they're in, like, the Swiss Army or something like that. And uh, he comes back usually during the holidays, and – he takes all these bottles back over to Switzerland or somewhere over in Europe, and they FaceTime me and just are ecstatic when they try it. And Another country? Yeah, and that's a yearly thing. That's pretty cool because... It's got to make you feel really good. It's taking stuff that I have, and it's going across the world, so that's pretty cool too. So Yeah. I, uh, it's cool for me because I picked me and my mom. My mm. mom actually does all the barrel picks with me. Which nobody would believe. Right. So, I thought it would just be you. No. it's And I take customers with me as well. Oh, so that's smart. I pick a couple guys that I know that are into it or whatnot, and I try to spread out the wealth to everybody because it's not something that you get to experience as a regular person. Like, you're right. just a shopper. So when I come to you and I say, hey, I'm doing a Breckenridge pick next week. Do you want to join? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'm like, all right, let's go. Here it is. Right. <laughs> we got five barrels. Now that's out of Colorado, so they'll send us the samples, and we'll sit there and just sample all these whiskey barrels and roll with it. And, and then you have to pick one in specific. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you know what the taste profile is. Sometimes you pick it out yourself, and more times than none, you pick it out without knowing like a taste profile. On so definitely the smaller distillers, um, and that's what makes it interesting. Mm. Where that is true to what we like. Mm. Definitely, uh, and I mean, how, how do you and your mom keep getting better? Is it just with experience in terms of tasting bourbon, or how does that work? On the tasting side of things, I think you always have a chance to get better. Mm. I mean, I don't care if it's food, color taste, any decorations, whiskey, beer. You're, the more you do it and you experiment, right. the better your profile is going to get mm. in anything you do in life. For sure. I would say as a business business aspect of it, it's her helping me, teaching me the business, and at mm. the same point is kind of putting getting her up to date with what's going on in the world right now. Right. So we it'll always be a work in progress. For I mean sure. everything's gonna be a work in progress. Well and you've taken the social media to a another level. In my opinion. Yeah, and you know, <laughs> you, know how, you know how I am. I'm not the biggest social media guy, and we have some fun with it. And you got enjoy one it. Well, the the fireball. How much did that have? And we just checked it. Uh, it <laughs> two point five million views. Two point five million free views. I don't think you had to pay for it. Didn't correct? pay for a single one of them. And when I was talking to you a month ago, I joked and said, "Oh, I have sixty thousand views. This is really cool." And then you said, "No, you have one point five million views." Yeah. And I was like, "You had sixty thousand likes." Yeah. yeah, see, I don't even know what I'm talking about. Yeah. That's, that's how much I'm in with social media, and it's it's enjoyable when you see something like that blow up. But sure, um, that's why you're in the business, and that's why I'm here with you. Well, <laughs> well, and it just you've taken it on your own limb. You know, you you guys went out, got that mini billboard out front, mm -hmm. and most business owners wouldn't have the awareness to say, okay, it's showing some stuff. People are driving by. 
but you took it a step further. I, I know you do a every Friday yep. video. And I mean, people, if you don't do it, I mean, people are calling you freaking out. So I hope you don't have to have a sick day on a Friday. Um, well, that'd be an I'd, issue. I'd, I'd still make it in. I'd oh, still you'd make still it just in. show I'd up just, to just take for, that just video. Just for the customers. I just that. for the customers. I figured but that. Yeah, we, uh, the Billboard Friday thing is just hysterical. And we get away with a lot of content that we can put out there. Right. And you just kind of make it just. We're not going over the top, but we're making good. I mean, Bob Knight throwing a chair yep. across the floor, uh, Indy 500, 100 days out, do something like that. Um, this is nothing. We haven't gotten to the advertising side of mm. that billboard just because it's kind of tough because sure. it's only getting up there for 10 seconds right. to where when I just do those fun videos. or And if I do advertisement, it's going to be on like Jack Daniels, Miller Lite, Budweiser, right. things like that that's going to like draw on attention. Um but yeah, those billboards are would have never thought. I yeah, mean, you're right. to see the viewership that we get and when I don't do it, they're like, Hey, where where's the billboard been? Well, I haven't came up with something funny yet, so just give me a second. Hey, you give know? me a few days, man. That's called good marketing. Is what, what that is, my friend. But let's talk so you got the billboard, you obviously as we mentioned, you took that to the social side of things. But what what about the events? The events you guys have? Yeah, I mean, well, you had won that guy. I mean, how many people? Yeah, we did a uh, bourbon raffle in the end of December, which is all for like allocated bourbon um, products. So you're looking at all Buffalo Trace products and you have Heaven Hill products that are hard to get. Um, things you just don't see throughout the year. So sometimes you see six bottles, sometimes you see one bottle. But we went from our first year doing it two years ago now, um, 150 bottles and had 100 and some odd people there. So like people saw like two bottles. And then with how crazy the bourbon thing has gone just in a year, and for our business itself, we had 188 bottles and had 500 people there. Dang. All at your store. All at the store. And that just freaked me out. And like, That's a lot of people. I dude. was told, <laughs> told like, hey, next time, contact the fire marshal and just make sure everything's good. Because like, I w you're just not expecting that aspect Who would of it. And expect it's like 500 hey, people to show up, bring it on. And like, we had people waiting outside, everything oh. else. And it was, it was really fun. But what's fun about quote unquote, a train wreck of a <laughs> event, event yeah. is you learn from it. Oh, for and sure. then you go to change it and you're going to make improvements and show people like, Hey, this is what we're going to do. Mm. So, gets very interesting on that aspect of it because that was something we were definitely not ready to have. Right. But it just shows the amount of um, appreciation that people have for Red Barrel. So, Or definitely just where it can go mm -hmm. in terms of events. So what kind of events do you guys have coming up? So we're doing tastings pretty much every Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I mean, give or take which days they are. But weekly we're doing tastings. Um you can always come in every day and have a uh, sample of our, any of our store picks. But doing tastings, I've got uh, March 10th, March 17th. Uh, Keeper's Heart's coming in, which is an Irish whiskey. Mm. They're doing, they have a really fun one. They have regular Irish whiskey, and they have Irish blended with bourbon. So that's going to be a fun little event, especially for St. Pat Patty's Day coming up. Then we got the March Madness, so hopefully it's a good, right. good comparison. Right. I know I'll be drinking Miller Lite for the <laughs> for the for the tourney games. I got to work that Saturday, but uh, that that is what it is. It's part of being a business owner. So. Part of the game. <laughs> yep. So events, we I think we've covered all the basics bases. Obviously, your mom's gonna take full reign here in the upcoming years, and then you'll be her number two. Where do you want to take Red Barrel Liquors? My Where ultimate goal is to just make two singles single point stores. What my mom has done mm. and just make them the best single point stores you can find because now you're always looking at like liquor stores that are in strip malls or you're looking at your costcos and krogers and stuff like that where we're still mom and pop owned we're doing that thing but i would just want to make sure that what my family has done explodes mm. when i get there mm. because it'll come quicker for me than what it did for my mom well, I take that back. My mom actually created this monster, and I'm trying <laughs> to tame it and just explode it. Let the monster out of the cave. There you go. And it'll be it'll be fun to see where we go because I could see like our craft beer section getting better. I can see the wine room where our wine room is good. Um, 
it just takes a lot of focus on each section of what For we sure. offer. And that's, you don't realize how much it's a lot. stuff is in a liquor store because you can go from bitters, mixers, cocktails, mm-hmm. like, and then you're like, oh, well, what about the vodka, rum, yeah. tequila, whiskey, beer? <laughs> I mean, we could get into it. We could do the Stone All Cold the Steve. Al- we give right. Stone Cold Steve Austin take on that, and right. it's just, it just never stops. And it, there's always new product coming in every day. Well, you'll definitely, uh, yeah, I I agree with you. Just double down on what's cooking and uh, make it the most well-oiled machine you can. And, yep. You know. Because, uh, I mean, one, if you get too much, you know, it, it, you can't maintain it. You can't. And then you also have to worry about, like, your where pricing is going and For figuring sure. out. Because, like, you get a new company that comes in and their stuff's overpriced. Mm-hmm. And they can't challenge the big guys. But they offer a great product. So is that company willing to come in and do samplings or right. events and things like that? And when that doesn't happen, that hurts us because we bring in a product that's not moving. Yeah. And it's a good product. And. Yeah, I can take my time out, and I will, to move this product for a local Indiana company. But I'm like, you guys are in our backyard. Mm. You should be moving your product. Don't put it on the wholesaler because I know you're going and doing tastings at Kroger, like mm. all those major box stores. So you throw it on a little guy just to make that extra penny. Yeah, that's... And it's like, hey, we don't do this. <laughs> right. When I was... My last tip of the thing is, you know just how important it would be for you once you get to that next level of just keeping the brand in play. Mm -hmm. I think that, you know, I always, even in my brain of what I'm doing as an interviewer is like, what do I have in comparison to anyone else in the video game? And, but, but why do people pay for Nike or Gucci? It's it's all the name. It's the brand. Everybody wants the name. They're going to pay for a lot of things, but at the same, you can go and support multiple, yeah, multiple small businesses across the whole entire world and be happier for sure than what you're going to get out of a larger corporation. That's yeah. I pardon my French, but this is how I always explain it. You can come to us and pay like an actual retail price, or you're going to go to a major box store and pay $5 less on a case of beer, but your ship paper is $10 a roll. Mm. So there's always lost leaders in every business. Yep. And your small businesses can't afford to do that aspect of it. But your big companies, once we get, once they kill the small liquor store business, everything's going to go up and skyrocket. Mm. It's just like, yeah, even got to figure it out. Even my dad and I, I mean, we make it a, a point to, to, to spend our money with, with you guys or anyone that we know is, you know, in the game of, of, of small business. It's not a, it's not peaches and cream. No. So if you can give some money back in any way, may it be alcohol, nope. may it be a window Wait, tent. Get a window tent, yeah. stereo. I mean, I'm probably coming to see you with my stereo because it's all kinds of jacked up <laughs> right now. So we're going to, and it's just a give and take business. And that's the best part yeah. of the thing about friendships is correct. you you trust them. You're never mad if they go somewhere else. Right. But it's like, all right. But damn it, support me. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you know? Yep. But. And that's Alex, what, oh, go ahead. You got something else? No, I was going to say I support the Sam Fouts show, baby. That's what we do. <laughs> well, that's Alex Draving, baby. Red Barrel Liquors. That's a wrap. Thank you. Hey, my backpack out there. Backpack out here? Out there. There's, a, there's like? a Miller Lite. It's a great one. Just grab me one and crack it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you can put that in the, you can put that in the clip. Put that in the clip. <laughs> Fresh. You're the best. <laughs> you send us an emoji.